Logan, how do you feel so far? Good. Yeah? We're getting there? Yeah. How are you gonna go get your power chocolates now? Dingy. <laughs> no one ever said life is easy, but if you play your cards right, meaning safely, you can get rewarded with a pathway to security which will leave you dreaming of what will life look like when we finally retire? You guys want to say hi? In our case, we were 100% heading down the safe route until we came to the epiphany that our kids only have a few precious years under our roof. Hello, we are here with Largo Swear on Avalar Adventure News. Largo, yeah. what is your favorite part of this first week in Costa Rica? Well... So we tossed the predictability aside for a more intentional life. Now we are close to achieving new milestones, launching Avalon off to college and ourselves off the dock, for real this time. Join us as we are still in two separate locations and enjoying the fact that a harder life definitely has its rewards. This is it. Now what? <laughs> Largo, should we do a dance? No. All right, we'll do a dance later. It's early. It's, it's not even 8 a.m. yet. You tell me you're scared you Tell me you're If there's one good thing that being at a marina gives you, it gives you the opportunity to go ahead and check out other boats. Now, here I am. This is like Catamaran Row for the entire marina. No, our boat does not make the cut for Catamaran Row. We're, we're <laughs> I don't know if this is by design or what, but we're just a little bit of a small boat. I mean, seriously, look how tiny it looks. That, that's the friendship right there. And then behind that, that, that Goliath, it looks like it's behind that. That's only like a Lagoon 45. It's not... <laughs> We're not exactly competing. We're not exactly competing against like like monster boats. Like 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 for instance, over there, over here is a Bali 54. This is a monster. This is this is more than you can ever want to even think about. But what it what it gives you is it gives you inspiration. There's like a, a Katana 47, which is over here, which is really, I like it. It's like kind of old school. It's funny how why are only like like why are the only boats that have character are like the old ones. Why can't new boats have character? There's a weird rule about that. I have no idea what that is. But what I truly love is this boat right over here. And this is the Athena. It's a Fontaine Pajot. It's Athena. And I, I imagine this is like 37. It is the most adorable boat I can only imagine. It feels like it was built before there were actually like visions of making like things like this. That's, that's a Lagoon 42, by the way. It's so cute. It is like... It's honestly, it's once again wider than our boat, but but that, listen, I'm done playing that game of whose who's boat's wider than whose, because I know that ours loses every single game, unless you're playing a whose boat is less wide, in, in which case, score. Listen, you buy the boat that you can, and then you enjoy it the most you can, and in this case, we are, well, by the time this vlog is over, we are going to be on the hook. Uh, yeah, we've got our, our technicians coming back. We are going to go ahead and we are going to get our engine fixed. <sighs> Marina, before this vlog is over, you are toast. For now, for now. While Will and Largo are getting things ready on the boat, Avil and I are adjusting to our life in Valencia. One of the things that is long overdue was to show our gratitude to the apartment agent who helped us get into our space on that Easter Sunday. It's okay? Perfect. Yes. yes, yes. So here's the deal. I am a huge, huge fan of thanking people and bringing them little presents, little snacks, little treats when they go above and beyond the call of duty. And there really was just no reason for this employee or this company to find us a place to stay on Easter. And even though their payment system wasn't working to trust that we would pay and pay in cash and let us in early. So I'm gonna go deliver a nice thank you to them today. Sorry, I'm videoing you guys because you guys were so, if you don't mind, so kind oh, to me. Okay, fine. Um, letting me in on Easter. And I really, really appreciate it. And the payment system was not working. 
And this lovely lady is helping me and she's gonna get all the cake to herself, I guess, <laughs> because no one else is here. Um, absolutely cannot recommend them enough. If you are like Avalon and I, and Will and Largo, and you have not been in a place that's free and open, and you've been locked down for almost six months like us, this outside is gonna maybe seem a bit alarming. Everyone has masks on, but there are people everywhere. Restaurants are open, people are sitting inside. So this is my little disclaimer to warn you. The other thing is, Avalon and I have decided this morning that we are not going back to France and we're not going back to that boat. We like it here. So I'm gonna try and convince Will when he sees this in the edit to find a way to come to us because I don't wanna go back. This might sound a little weird and creepy, but if you know me and you know how social I am, you'll get this. See all those people sitting at tables? A part of me wants to go over and say, hola, mi espanol más o menos. Can we be friends? Can I, can I sit down, have a beer with you, chat? I don't care what we talk about, just, it looks, look at that. Doesn't it look like fun back there? Now, look at this, a bookstore. A bookstore, completely open. Avalon and I walked by this the other day and I thought she would die. She has not been in a bookstore in, I don't know, seven, eight months at this point. And she is so missing just going to wander around. We didn't go in because it was really tight and small and she had her mask on, but we just didn't feel comfortable. At least not yet. See, that's, that's part of the problem with coming from where we came from in France, or just France in general, and being used to kind of locked down and being skeptical about anything. We're a little bit gun shy now in the sense that we don't really want to go into buildings. We don't want to be in tight spaces. And considering her exams coming, I think we're probably just going to stick to walking around outside. We're quite happy just to be outside and see people um, and feel the energy. And although it's not warm today, it's been warm the last couple of days to so feel the sun, see people laughing like that. That in itself is really awesome. So around here, everything is generally locked up. When I mean by locked up, I mean like, like closed down because of social distancing, because of all the pandemic um, you know, measures, restaurants are closed, the tobacco shop, they're open. You know, it's France. And essentially there are, there's very little to do around here. And that's, that's, that's quite all right. I mean, I, I don't necessarily need to go ahead and be hanging out in bars and restaurants uh, while Jessica's away. Although it'd be nice to take more out for a little something. But nevertheless, um, where the biggest, the biggest effect right now is the fact that like the ship chandlery is kind of closed so you can't even go inside so if you have to go and get something like i have to now we have to get stuff for our ditch kit um there is it's almost like walk-up service so you have to like you can't instead of like looking at the aisles you have to like ask them do you have this and in france luckily this place actually speaks some english so i'm pretty excited about that and so this is what we have to do like i said it's like walk-up service And, and to be honest, this is my favorite of all the different ship chandlers I've been in in all of France. And uh, it's really been, it's like the most eclectic place. I wish I could take you inside. Before the lockdown happened, I walked inside. It was, it was magical. Bonjour. Bonjour, monsieur. And so essentially we're just getting a bunch of stuff for our ditch kit. Um, floating line, a bunch of dry bags. Um, Stainless steel snap hooks, some you know lights that they go snap and light up in the night. I forgot what they're called. They're just they're the, the glow sticks that you hang out in clubs with. This shows you how how much of a sailor I'm not. But essentially, um, but this is you know what sort of going to ship channel looks like nowadays. It's actually really good because. You spend a lot less because the impulse buy just does not exist anymore. The reason why our family had to split up was to ensure that Avalon could enter Spain before further lockdowns were enacted as she was scheduled to take exams in Madrid. 
As much as she had been 100% committed to preparing, it was time to get her out of the office and enjoy a little bit of life. This is pretty much my view every day. Well, actually, it's more like I'm over here at my computer. This is my view. Avon likes to have a variety of food to pick from. So we have breakfast. Is that breakfast right there? Yes. That's lunch-ish and second lunch, right? It's now lunch and snack. Oh, sorry, lunch and snack. <laughs> we haven't gotten to second lunch yet. <laughs> All right, Avalon, are you ready for your surprise to leave your trusted workspace that you're at 24 seven? <laughs> she sleeps there. Don't look at it. So I've, I'm gonna give you some hints. I gave you some hints this morning. I'm gonna give you some more. You're gonna get dirty a little bit. You're gonna be sitting the whole time it's inside. Any guesses? Food. No. How else can we get dirty and sit? How, I know. How is it possible to get to sit and get dirty while inside? No, I'm not telling. I'm not telling. What is it? I'm not what telling is? you. <laughs> so this girl has been working her butt off, literally 12 to 15 hour days, most days, minus a couple hours on social media, chatting with friends and whatnot, and all that stuff and her brother, she misses her brother. Um, and I have come to the conclusion that she has to, besides leaving the house to run, that's the only time she leaves, that I'm gonna drag her out once a week to do a surprise activity. So today, we're taking off for this surprise activity and we're gonna take you guys along with us. So the guessing continues. What was your next guess? Not a movie, is it? Do you think I would go sit in a movie theater during COVID times? I don't know. It's an outdoor movie. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna reveal the surprise now. Are we going thrift shopping? No, thrift shopping's a great idea though. No. We are going to make pottery. Oh, how, how? Um, that's a good question. All right, so. <laughs> how did you get her pottery? What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're getting away from your computer. Are you okay with that? I'm fine. So we're gonna start off making a bowl and then later on we're gonna do something else in the meantime. So a cereal bowl? Yes, actually that's good because we do have cereal now. And we do have some, and back on the boat, our bowls are breaking constantly, so. Mm -hmm. I think I've done pottery in three countries now. So it's India, the US, US, and then France as well. It's, it's really fun, it's really cool to make something that like wasn't there before, before and then you should be able to come home with a thing that you created, it's really interesting. Yeah, and do you, really cool. does it relax you at all, like yoga or maybe a massage, or do you, do you just like the art part of it? It's very relaxing, I think. It's very like repetitive, so yes. My thought has been that each Friday I will have a surprise for Avalon for a couple of hours to get her away from the computer. We definitely yeah. will have to come back here because we've got to fire them and glaze them and do some finishing touches, but she's really liking it, so we might do like two days here and then two other Fridays elsewhere. You know, Avalon is toying between different majors at university. Maybe this might be one, a new one. What do you think, Avalon? Potter? Yeah, this is just a pastime. Just a pastime for not you? I'm saying it couldn't become a career, but it's not for me. It's not for you. So we're closing up for today, and we'll be back next week to finish this up. Avalon's, you can't see it under there, but it's a masterpiece. <laughs> As much as Avalon and I were embracing our inner Paul Soldner, the boys were back on board getting a little artistic on their own. So on board our boat, on board our catamaran, there are two engines. There are, they're both in the rear, clearly. Um, one on the port side, one on the outside, and they both happen to be like underneath the beds. So this bed, the master suite, um, I, don't know, I don't know why I keep calling it, my room and Jessica's room, um, is there's, there's a, there's a engine underneath here, you gotta lift it up and it's all the way there. It's actually pretty easy to get to because it's only one mattress you have to, that you have to pull up. It's not all that challenging. Well, not all, not all that challenging compared to what you see in Largo's room. Largo's room is, he's on the starboard side on the aft and this is his bed. And his bed also has two mattresses, but his is a little more challenging to get into the engine because of the way that the whole mattress is set up. Um, it, whenever we have to get to the engine, it, we, we hate getting into this engine. It's not up going up! It's not... It's not going! So today we're actually going to do something a little little more ingenious. Um, we got ourselves new bed sheets. Well, sort of repurposed bed sheets. So these are the new sheets, which are actually sewn by a friend of the channel. We're super excited because these are not exactly standard size sheets. 
what this is going to give us is the opportunity to like individually take these off. Largo, how are you doing over there? I'm happy that we're going to be able to individually take these off. And not destroy your bed anymore? Yeah. Largo, here's a big problem though. You're going to be sleeping with like a big crack in the middle now. Is that going to be okay? So it doesn't really matter. When you're that tired, it doesn't really, doesn't really make a difference, does it? Yeah. And so now with the, the slight modification of the bed, if I want to get into the engine compartment here, which we're going to be doing a lot more, um, we just have to lift up the one and we don't have to disassemble the entire item. It is, listen, getting underneath here to check the oil levels and everything else is no fun. Anytime you have to destroy a bed just for the sake of doing routine maintenance, which is done more than once a week, um, is, is no fun. The easier we can make it for ourselves, the more we're going to not dread um, sort of the, the routine stuff. Speaking of things that have been lacking in our lives, our cooking. But now that we have some incredible markets around, it's time to get cranking. So today I am out gathering ingredients for a Moroccan meal I'm going to cook tomorrow which I'm super excited about because we have a kitchen and space and all this awesomeness. I'm going to gather the ingredients from Rusafa Market so I get a little bit of culture because it's a popular market here in Valencia. And then I will gather whatever else I have left over at the local grocery store that I can not that I can just get anywhere. So the interesting thing is, is that I'm going to be cooking in this huge kitchen, which got me thinking about, do I miss this? Do I miss having a kitchen? Do I miss having all the tools I need to cook a meal at my fingertips? And honestly, it's been fun for, you know, a couple of days, um, you know, a couple of weeks, and I could probably do it even for a couple of months and be quite content. But what I'm realizing is the hot shower, the nice long hot showers and the kitchen and all the conveniences are just not that interesting to me anymore. My first stop is going to be spices because every good meal starts with spices. You guys know how I love spices and how I always talk about wanting an additional spice rack besides the one that comes with the boat. So maybe I can get someone here to help me, <laughs> help me build one. Where are you from? United States. United States. Saffron. El. Como se dice? Saffron? No, azafrán. Azafrán. Azafrán genuino español. My last stop for the stuff from my Moroccan meal, cilantro, garlic, and onions. And then I might just tool around a little bit and see what else I can find that's local here to bring back for dinner tonight. If I could bring these peppers and these babies home to Will, he is dying for hot peppers and we cannot find them anywhere in France. But I think since we're not gonna see him for probably another three weeks, they might go bad before that time. So sorry, honey. Um, this recipe is not mine that I created. It's called chicken makali. I hope I pronounce, I'm pronouncing it right. M-I-K-A-L-L-I. -L -L -I. My friend Amanda from Moroc Mom recommended it and she saw it or has a friend or something like that, the website mymoroccanfood.com. So go check it out. How's math going? Is that a math equation? <laughs> We put all of the onions in. It's a lot of onions in this dish, so you better really like onions. Cover it and then let it simmer for a bit until the onions become translucent. While we're waiting for the onions to do their thing, let's talk about the spices. Um, it doesn't have too many spices, so this one calls for four cloves of garlic, uh, a little bit of pepper, pinch of salt. Now this is interesting because this is salt with lemon because I didn't realize I bought salt with lemon, which is really lovely on avocado toast. I don't know how good it's gonna taste with chicken, but um, a generous pinch of saffron. So I don't know what a generous pinch means, but I'm gonna say like half of this container. Onward, ginger. It says one teaspoon. I'm gonna do a real generous teaspoon because I love to kind of add extra spices to anything I'm doing. Turmeric, turmeric, same thing. Nice, big, generous one. I have a confession. This is my chicken for later that I need to put in the fridge because I'm cooking one for the vlog and then later today I'm gonna go live on Instagram and do this. So you guys are the guinea pigs. So whatever I screw up here, hopefully I won't screw up when I'm live. 
That's why I picked an easy recipe. I told Will that if this goes well, we're just gonna skip the travel. We're gonna turn this into a cooking channel. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many people have asked us to do a cookbook of the recipes that we have um, got from people in countries that we've traveled and um, share some stories about it. And we have really, really considered it. Like it's one of those things that's on the, on the list of projects for maybe later in the year to explore more. I don't want to take my camera down guys because I'm really scared I won't be able to get it back up. So, and basically just scared a little whirl, coat the chicken a little bit more. That looks beautiful guys. You, I don't know if you can see this, but the saffron is just kind of hanging on the chicken. Oh, I'm so glad I went extra on the spice. Oh my gosh. Next step in the process is to add approximately eight ounces of water, then add a bouquet of cilantro. I'm gonna guess this is a little bit bigger of a bouquet than they think they're mentioning in the recipe, but I'm gonna put it in anyway. And then you're gonna bring it to a boil. So I'm gonna put it back on the heat, bring it to a boil. Once it's a boil, lower it to a medium low heat, put the cover on and leave it there for about 50 minutes. And the final step in the process before we eat is to throw in the lemon preserves and the olives. We're gonna leave that for about 10 minutes. If you guys like this and you want to see more, I guess it would actually be boat cooking, um, let us know, we'll try to do more of these. The, you know, the boat kitchen's a little bit different. However, I'm sure we can do something really cool. If you want more of this, if you're like, ah, this is a really cool Moroccan thing, come on our Will Towning Voyages Morocco trip, which is in October. There's all kinds of details in the description about it. If you have any questions, let us know. And then here is the final product. Doesn't it look delicious? I'm going to try it. Mm. Fabulous. With all this action in Spain, it's hard to remember that we have a boat with a faulty engine connection to boot. But it was finally time to see to that matter, a bit ahead of schedule. You're back. Yay. Yes. You have the piece? But, yes. Um, but right, 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 real quick, let, let's take apart the bed. Uh, I need the bed. Only the bed. Just, uh, just plug in. No. And now we can just pull it out like that. And not to destroy the other side, Largo. In a pinch, look at that instant engine. Access to the engine where my bed is still intact, mostly. It's his progress, Largo. We're, uh, we're making miracles here on the boat. So we're getting a brand new cord that is not going to fail us. It's gonna make everything perfect. Good. So what he did this time is that he's stringing this, he's stringing this to the, to the last wire, which you had when you pulled out the last cord. And there's the other side of that line, which once he has it typed up, we're just gonna sort of, we're just gonna pull it all the way back and reattach, and it should be really easy. Hopefully in less than an hour, we're gonna have the engine running. And then we'll decide. <laughs> That's where the real question comes, is what, what's Largo and I gonna do now? It was really easy to say, well, we can't go anywhere. We're stuck here. Thanks. Ship up. It works, it works. Uh, okay. Engine. Okay, you gotta connect it to the engine. So after all is said and done, we now have a, a new cable, which is working just fine. But we now ran into an issue where our battery is, is running into issues. So the, the analysis is this, is that the old cable was frayed. I'm tempting ah. itself. The old cable was frayed. It was constantly checking on the battery and sort of giving signals to the panel saying, let's go, let's go, let's go. It just, it drained the battery down to below the point that it can be recharged. So right now the battery's reading about 5.7 volts, which means it's practically dead. Um, well, it means it's dead. And so the only way to solve this problem is the battery. We've gone ahead, we've done like a battery switch change. Since we do have two engines, we have two batteries. We switch the terminals on the batteries to check on both sides and we've done it. And we, we you know, now because of that, we can look at this and this is turning on just fine and I can even turn on the motor. I can turn on the motor and it's, and it's working just fine too. So all that being said, um, one more step of the boat that's getting upgraded, whether we like it or not. Just like that, we have a new battery. 
<laughs> That's a small batter. Hmm? It's petite, no? Oui. Oui. So the question, does it work? Finally, after all is said and done, that one's gone. These two are working and we don't have any excuses anymore. Largo, you know what that means? Huh? You know what that means? No. That means we get to leave. We get to do stuff. We get to not be on, on. You, it means you have to go ahead and <laughs> take a dinghy to run. No. But we are, we're staying overnight on the hook. We're taking off. We're really excited about this because Actually, I'm not really excited about this. I'm kind of nervous about this. But the weather's amazing. So, right here is where we're going to be. Check this out. This is a super protected area when the wind's coming from the west. Um, if the wind comes from the east, it's, it's, not, it's not easily um, a protected area. But lucky for us, we have about a week of like really favorable winds. I mean, that like the winds, yeah, may kick up to like 20 knots. But it's, it's coming from this direction, which means sort of this land's gonna sort of make it a gentle ride. Uh, I've been postponing this moment for a while, mainly because the engine has been, hasn't been working. It is, I'm a bit nervous. All right, you ready to Largo? Ready to start our next adventure without mom and It's Avalon? currently the same adventure, just a new stage. It's a new chapter. All right, let's cast off that last line. And so with that, we are, we've done the first manned passage. <laughs> All right, and so with that, we've done our first manned passage, just Largo and I. It is one small step for man. One giant leap for Largo and I. Listen, it is uh you don't you don't build skills like this overnight. Ooh. You gotta you gotta you know you gotta take like eight months of COVID, a uh, canceled sailing instructor, and then and then having your parents go to Spain split up, and then next thing you know, well, here we are. <laughs> don't get too excited! And so far, this is uh, this is where we're gonna be. The mooring field is a mooring field. There's no there's a mooring ball. The an the anchorage is quite nice today. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be this nice the entire time that we're here. There are scheduled bad weather bad weather systems coming. Um, not necessarily awful. You know, we're talking like gusts in like the the high 30s, and it's just gonna be one of the things that we're just gonna see what we can do, what we can tolerate as as sort of liveaboards because we still have yet to sort of test that part of our system. We're also gonna test like the water maker. We're gonna make sure that our solar uh, production and consumption is, is sort of on par with, with what we need. And um, and we're just gonna have, a, more than anything else, a real good reason not to leave the boat. Um, we, uh, we're very much hermits on this boat already. So once we're on anchor, it's almost gonna be like, okay, that's, that's why we're not doing it. Largo! Now we can now we can not leave the boat and have a reason not to leave the boat. You ready with that bridal Largo? Not yet. So I think at this point we are close to being oh boy, in a position where we can uh, let go. I think we are far enough from any suspecting collisions. Um, we have about five meters of depth, which means we're going to put down. Um, 20 meters of chain and and then with that what we got 60 feet so that's more than enough distance between us and them you ready and with that we are we're done look at that we did a strength test 
on the anchor to make sure we're good. We revved it up to 2,500 RPMs on both sides and we held great. This is it. Now what? <laughs> Largo, should we do a dance? No. All right, we'll do a dance later. It's early. It's, it's not even 8 a.m. yet. All right, okay. so we are, we're done, Jess. We're on the hook. We're on the hook. Gu guys, we're on the hook. And we're talking to Jessica. It's really fun right now. Yay! Is there footage? Is there what? Is there footage from on the hook in this vlog or is it in the next vlog? Uh, it's the one that people are watching right now. It's, it's, it's the one that, There's it's the one that has too much of a Valencia in it. You recorded way too much. So this is gonna be a really long <laughs> vlog. So we have to end this vlog like really fast. Listen. Alan and I have a story to tell, and we want our voice heard. What is Largo doing? Is he checking on the neighbors? <laughs> oh, nothing. I'm just monitoring the person who's currently. Listen, if we are, if we're ever at an anchorage, listen, if we're ever at an anchorage and you can see us, don't do anything you're not supposed to do because Largo's probably looking right, right inside your window. It's not, it's not, it's not a pretty thing. Okay, with that, we have to end this vlog. All right, subscribe. The next video will be all about our life on the hook, and in Largo, hopefully not getting arrested. And comment to tell me if I'm doing anything wrong on the hook. These are mostly all like charter boats. So when I look at these boats, I go, yeah, it's nice. But when I also look at them going, you know, the people who actually take them out, it's not their boat. It's like a rental. All right, guys, look at these paella pans. Oh my gosh. I don't love paella, but those are so cool. I feel like I should bring one of those back as a gift. All right. How was that, Miss Avalon? It was very fun. It was very relaxing. But now all I can think about is, oh my God, two hours lost. Two hours lost? Yes. No. Of that work. Ah. All right. So I'm not filming that often, which I am going to start filming more often. But because I'm such a novice at this, I did not empty this card on here. So now I've ran out of room. So I'm going to have to tape the rest of my time on the iPhone. So be patient with me. I'm sorry, Will. Hey, honey. Uh -huh. Um, can you translate for me? I need preserved, like, lemons, but I need the whole lemon. Will, you'll be so impressed with how I have this camera hooked up up here. I'm impressed with myself. And that one didn't help me. I did it on my own. All right. So around here, everything is generally boarded up. When I say boarded up, I mean, like, not open. Because of the lockdown and social distancing, do I have this thing on 35? Ooh, okay. <laughs> Come on! I imagine this is going to be particularly depressing for Will to edit when he sees everything that's going on here, people having fun, people dining out. So, honey, I'm going to say it right now. I'm sorry that you're, you have to edit this. I promise, even though I said in the beginning we're not coming back, I will come back. But I want to get out real fast. <laughs>